maps, maps, and more maps. Anyone can just Google the word maps and you get millions of results. But the problem is, how do you know if they're usable for commercial projects? And it can be surprisingly difficult to find high resolution scans. Now add to that, many museum and government websites are really complicated and confusing to navigate. So here are three resources that feature easy to navigate, high resolution, public domain maps. These are perfect for high-end wall art, t-shirts, coffee mugs, or any art project. Let's go explore maps. If you're not super picky about which map you want to use, then Raw Pixel is probably your best bet for ease of use. So I'm on a site here called rawpixel.com. I'm just going to type in the word maps into the search window. And then I'm going to get back a whole bunch of results. Now, the nice thing about Raw Pixel, first of all, they're really high quality images, they're high quality scans. And second, over on the right hand side, you can see a public domain piece. So when you click on public domain filter on the right hand side, you only get back public domain. So everything you're going to see here is going to have a little free tag and it's also part of the public domain. So I'm just going to click something here at random like this one here and I'll just open it up. And you can see here, this is a map of Paris and it'll give you a little bit of background here on the right hand side. You can click the little more button and it'll show. This, I see this quite a bit digitally enhanced by raw pixels. So I think the website itself is doing some sort of enhancement and it looks, I think, fantastic. Now you can download it either the web size, the large size or the original size. You can also do a TIFF versus, which is pretty high resolution pixels. It's a really large file or you can do a JPEG file. I like downloading the original size personally. And then when you just click free download, that's all there is to it. And then it'll just pop up with a little window asking you to download the file. Very easy to do. Now, if you're interested in just making sure that this really is public domain, because that's my concern is, you know, I go to a lot of blogs and a lot of websites and they'll say, oh, here's some public domain pictures. And I'm going, well, where's the source? So you can see down here, there's a source, which is the actual museum it came from. And then there's also it'll say public domain here on the right hand side. It'll say public domain CCO image. And CCO just means it's truly in the public domain. You're free to remix it. You're free to use it for commercial purposes. Nobody is actively pursuing any sort of copyright on this sort of a photo. We'll just do one more here. As you scroll down, you can see a lot of like medieval maps. I like these ones with the double globes. I think these are really cool. I'm actually gonna go to this one here though, because I like the idea of having a square photo. So this is a sky map. So this is like an astrology map or an astronomy map. You can see there's planets. I think this makes really nice artwork. Again, same deal, public domain image, free. You can download different sizes. And then on the down at the bottom, there's keywords. And I like the keywords because you can also search for these as well. And just whatever you search for on Raw Pixel, there's an option to do the public domain filter, which I really like. Okay, the next website that I like using for public domain images is the British Library. Pretty standard uh, you know, museum, one of the biggest museums in the world. The thing I like about the British Library is there's just so many resources inside of it. But the one thing I don't like about the British Library is it can be a little hard to navigate. So I'll just show you an example. So there's the map I want, right? You can just see it there. It just loads up in the background. I go, okay, well, um, so let me do uh, vintage maps. So let me like look at that, right? So then when you it says, oh, nothing found. Oh, so, okay, well then I'll go to the main website for British Library and that'll load up. So maybe I'll search the website here for vintage maps. And then what you get back are websites, you get back articles. It's like, that's not really what I want, okay? So I'm gonna be using the British Library, but I'm not going into the main website. What I'm gonna do instead is on Flickr, and I love Flickr because it's just easy. I like easy. So the British Library has a Flickr album. Flickr is like a social media kind of, you know, picture sharing app. And as you can see here, they have this thing called the photo stream. So you can just scroll through photos and you can see there's lots of maps. 
The other option is you can click on albums. And when you click on albums, you're going to get back a bunch of different albums. Now, I'll be honest with you, the one that I like the best is right at the top, which is kind of nice. And this is called the King's Topographical Collection. There's 17,000, almost 18,000 maps and other things in there. So I'm just going to click on that. Now, if you if you're using a television to watch this, you know, I'm going to put the links down in the video, but if you're not sure how to get there, it's called the King's Topographical Collection. And what you can do when you're in Google is you can just Google that phrase, King's Topographical Collection. It's a very like famous collection. And so you can see here the to King's Topographical Collection comes up right away. So when you click on the link, it'll come up here. Again, there's almost 18,000 maps in this Flickr album. Now, I really like Flickr because it's so easy to use. So as I scroll down, some of these maps are like ho-hum, they look okay. And then we start getting into some really cool maps a little bit way, far way down the page here. So you can see here, the, I love these circular maps of the globe. And some of these are really high resolution. So I'm just gonna click on like this one here, this Latin looking map. So this is like a constellation map, okay? So if you're curious about the actual quality of it. I'm just going to click on the little plus and you can see it goes quite high res. And then you click on it again and it goes even higher res, which is pretty cool. And then you click it a third time and it kind of pops back to normal. So one click zooms in, another click really zooms in, and then you can zoom back out. You can also scroll on down and at the bottom, they'll give you a nice recap of the actual photo. So it's kind of like you're virtually in the museum, you know, you get to read about it. And then over on the right, you'll see it says no known copyright restrictions. So everything in this King's topographical collection is public domain, at least to my knowledge. I mean, I've looked through a lot of these photos and, and illustrations and there seems to be a lot of, I mean, it's almost all, I haven't seen anything that's not public domain. I'll go back to the album. I'll continue to scroll through. Again, you're going to see a lot of these sort of high resolution scans. Now they do have pages of text as well because these are scans from books, but if you continue to scroll through, you're eventually gonna to get to more and more maps. So there's a lot of maps here in the British Library Museum, but my favorite of them is the King's Topographical Collection on the British Library. The third resource that I like using is the New York Public Library. Now I run into the same problem as I did with the British Museum. When I go to the New York Public Library page, there's a search feature over here, but you get everything. You get articles, you get, you know, help the kids and ask a librarian. Well, I just want maps, right? So what I do instead is I just Google New York Public Library Digital Collections. So the website is digitalcollections.nypl.org. And I really like this digital collections. Now inside of this, you can easily search over on the right. There's this keyword search. And when I search for the word maps, you'll notice a little filter comes up right underneath it. It says search only public domain materials. Thank you. That's exactly what I want. And then I'm going to search for maps. So now I get back three, 30,000 results for maps. And I've got collections at the top. And then I can also search through maps down below. And these are pretty high quality scans. So I'm just going to pick one completely at random here. Uh, how about this one here? So I'll just pop this one open. And we can zoom in on it. So you can see it's a pretty high quality scan of an old map. And again, there's so many that, you know, I mean, you can scroll button continues to work. You can get like really in there. So when I say these are high quality scans, I mean, they certainly appear to be very high resolution. You know, I've printed these off and put them on walls, not this particular one, but similar. And they, they scan, like they print really nicely at a print shop. Like if you go to Walmart or Staples or something like that, you can get a poster printed and the, and the print quality is pretty high on them. You might have to clean them up a bit digitally on Photoshop, but you get a really nice looking vintage piece of artwork out of it, especially with the borders. Now down below, you've got download options. You can download the original, for example. So when I click on the original, it will just simply pop up a little download box. You've got download options. Here's a little bonus tip. 
There's an online retailer called Geographicus, and they sell rare and antique maps. Here's an example of one from 1886. And the map is absolutely gorgeous. Now it's selling. This is the original antique map. So it's kind of like an old vintage comic book. It's selling for 7,500 US dollars. And when I click on it, it's absolutely gorgeous. You can see the detail on this map is pretty stunning. It's a really nice high quality scan. And that would make some pretty awesome art. You can just zoom in like it's incredible how much you can zoom in. Beautiful, beautiful illustrations. So how do you get a copy of this if you don't want to shell out 7,500 US dollars? Well, what you can do, Geographic has put a whole bunch of these maps in the public domain. Not necessarily this one, but a lot of the maps they put in the public domain. So what I'm going to do is just copy this title and I'm just going to go to Google and I'm just going to paste in the phrase that we were just looking at. And you can see it pops up on Geographicus, which is the which is the $7,500 rare map. But look down below. There is on the Library of Congress, there is the exact same map. So when I click on it, I'm in the Library of Congress now. There's the exact same map. I can download a copy of it. And when I click on the rights usage down here at the bottom, free to reuse and free to use and reuse maps of cities free to reuse. So it's it's a public domain photo. So the original obviously is 7500, but you can get a copy of it sometimes from a Library of Congress website or a museum website. So it's just a little tip there that if you're looking at an individual map and you're going, huh, I wonder if just a copy exists online, you can check out to see if it's part of a public domain. Now, Geographicus did put some images into the public domain. So there's actually on the Wikimedia Commons page, there's an entire page dedicated to this. Geographicus Rare Antiques Maps, they're a specialist dealer. They donated their collection of digital maps of images in March 2011. So what you can do is click on their, their collection of digital images of maps, and that brings you to the Wikimedia Commons page that has about 2,200 maps sitting in the Wikimedia page. And if you can only, it says here the following 200 files are in this category and you're like, hmm, how do I see the rest of them? They're right underneath it, there's a previous page and a next page. So I can click on next page and that will show me more maps and more maps. So these are really high quality scans and some of them are really quite beautiful, rare, vintage looking maps. And again, if you scroll on down, I love Wikimedia Commons because everything in there is by definition public domain, but it also says public domain. So if you ever need to prove up that you're using something in the public domain, you can most certainly use Wikimedia Commons for that. Absolutely beautiful. So I hope you found that helpful here. I've got some tips and tricks. I'll put all the links to the descriptions of the websites, like the actual website links down in the video description. And again, I, find, I hope you guys found that helpful. I always welcome comments, questions, you know, feedback on the YouTube channel. Love hearing from you guys. Thank you so, so much.